Hello everyone, this is Suzanne, and this is the Gospel Truth. Today I'm drinking white chocolate tea. This is made by um, Sleepy Time Teas, and it's really, really good, and I'm going to enjoy a sip. Mm-mm-mm. My husband makes my tea for me every single morning. It's such a blessing. Wake up and my tea's nice and hot and ready for me. And <laughs> quite a nice perk there. All right. Yes, I was not on yesterday. I apologize for that. I was super busy. I had a hard morning. Didn't get up till almost 12 o'clock. And then we had a two o'clock doctor's appointment. And then after we got out of there, I had to go pick up a few grocery items and I was so wiped by the time I got home. My, um, my knee and shoulder had been acting up quite a little bit. And when I have those days, it's, it's kind of rough. But anyway, enough about me. It's a blessed day in the Lord. The sun is shining brightly here in Rochester, Michigan. It's going to be 73 degrees. Wow. And we have to go out at 2 o'clock. Well, we have to leave before 2 to go to a um, the hearing aid place for my husband. Every month he has to go back to get his hearing aid checked and his hearing checked. So... That's on our agenda again today, but then we're kind of free for the rest of the month as far as doctors and appointments and stuff, so that's really a blessing. All right, we are studying the, the prison epistles, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. We have started in the book of Ephesians, and last time we left off with verse 12. Today we're going to cover verses chapter 1, 13, um, let's go all the way through 18. Okay. Ephesians 13 through 18. We are studying from our Smart Study Guide to the Bible. Paul and the Prison Epistles, the Bible Made Easy. Sometimes we need things to make sense, make it easier to understand, put it more in layman terms, so to speak. All right, let's get started on this wonderful study today. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless us as we read from your word, as we gain wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. You don't want your people to be ignorant, Lord. You want us to gain wisdom and power every day of our lives and be in service to you. We thank you for your son you gave to die on the cross for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember how letters used to be sealed with wax? Anybody remember that? A little bit before my time, but I heard about it, and we've certainly seen it in movies where kings put their the hot wax goes down and then their big stamp comes down of approval and it seals the letter and no one can open that letter except for who it was intended for. And if it arrived and it had been tampered with, that drew great suspicion like, okay, this has been tampered with, we can't trust it. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now Paul writes, you also trusted. He is referring to the Gentiles of the Ephesian church. God never intended for the good news about Jesus to remain only with the Jews. His original plan was that the Gentiles would also come into his family forever. 
In case the Gentiles should fear they aren't really a secure part of the plan, Paul talked about their being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Must have been a wonderful time for the Gentiles back then to learn that they were being accepted into the family that was open to them now also. And Paul was going to talk about being sealed by the Holy Spirit. In Paul's day, a seal was a portable instrument used to stamp a document or an item. It had the power and authority of an actual signature, but no document was considered reliable unless it had its person's seal. If you received a letter with the glue partially opened, you might wonder if anything was stolen or added to the letter. If it's an important document, you might even question whether it had been tempered tampered with or altered. Because they didn't have gummed envelopes like we do today, the people in Paul's days needed a wax seal. The imprint in the wax was a sender seal of the sender seal made it legitimate since only the sender possessed that unique seal with his name or design. When you became a Christian, God sealed you and gave you, whether you knew it or not, the Holy Spirit to be a deposit, a down payment. This is indication of future blessings that God will give the believers in heaven. Of course, the Holy Spirit also has the purpose of empowering you to live a holy life on earth, but his presence is much more than that. He is also God's assurance that you belong to him and you will receive the full inheritance that God has planned for every Christian. And this redemption is deliverance from all sin, even the ability to sin when the body arrives in heaven. If that isn't something to praise God about, what is? Vernon, J. Vernon McGee had this to say. Earnest money is the money that is put down as a down payment and pledge on a piece of property. It also means that you promise there is more money to follow. The Holy Spirit is our earnest money. He has been given us as a pledge and token that there is more to follow in the way of spiritual blessings. There is more to follow. Isn't that wonderful? More to follow. The Holy Spirit gives us assurance that we are secure. God doesn't break his covenant just as a seal shouldn't be broken before the right person receives it. We are secure. Authentic. The design inlay in the wax indicates that the person owning it used only one monogram tool. The Holy Spirit shows God's hand of ownership. Authentic. Approved. A seal was used only after the owner verified the information within the letter or document as acceptable to him. God puts his seal of the Holy Spirit on each Christian because he or she is deemed approved and acceptable because his or her sins have been washed away by Jesus' blood. Secure, authentic, approved. Genuine. A monogram's tool design was unique, owned by a single individual, impossible to be reproduced by another. In the same way, the Holy Spirit is unique and makes this genuine mark upon us that can't be imitated by another. It's genuine. Have you ever gone out to the Salvation Army, garage sales, thrift stores, and you see a little statue or figurine? What is the first thing that we do? We go over and we look at the bottom to see if it's authentic. It was made in Japan. The date that's on it, the name that's on it, that proves authenticity. And the Holy Spirit, God gave us that Holy Spirit inside of us to teach us, to guide us in all things. It's the seal of approval. I think that's fantastic. So we need to pray in the Spirit Every day we are to bless the Spirit for helping us. We need to do the things the Holy Spirit guides us into. That's very important. 
If you saw the, the movies Toy Story and Toy Story 2, I have. Oh, my God. Cutest movies ever. The mother of the son in the first movie had written the child's name, Andy, on the bottom of the Troy Cowboy's boot as a way to identify it as Andy's possession. Then, in the sequel, the cowboy is given a renewal job by the toy repairman, who paints over the name, Andy, on the cowboy's boot. Later in the movie, the toy is horrified to discover his owner's name is no longer there, and he wipes at the paint until the word Andy is again exposed. The identification had never been gone. It was just covered. In the same way, you and I have the same name, God's possession, written on our souls. And nothing, nothing can destroy that. At times, the name is hard to see because of our sin. But once we ask forgiveness, the name shows clearly again. Let's make sure the words God's possessions show at all times. When we go out and somebody looks at us, they just have this feeling. They know you're a Christian. You're a Christian. God's possession is showing. No Christian should think, well, I'm sealed and secure, therefore I can sin all I want. Not. With salvation comes an implanted desire to please God. We won't take advantage of the Holy Spirit's power all the time, but we do have his power so that we can obey God more and more. Every Christian has the seal of the Holy Spirit upon them immediately at the time of salvation. In other books of the Bible, other aspects of our inheritance in Christ are also mentioned. We are justified. We are not condemned. We are set free from the power of sin and death. We are sanctified and made acceptable to God because of Jesus. We are righteous and holy of Jesus in us. At the resurrection, we will be made alive eternally. We are a new creation. We receive God's righteousness. We are one in Christ with other believers. We are perfect in God's sight. We are set free from our sinful nature. We will have eternal glory. Wow, that isn't something to look forward to. I've been praying for you from day one. Now, Paul begins to detail how he has been praying for this group of believers. He desires for them are what God wants for every part of his body, the church. Paul is praying God's will for them, the only way God wants them to act and react. Just as Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 was one sentence in the original Greek, verses 15 through 23 are also a single sentence. Paul wants the Ephesians and every Christian to look at their inheritance in Christ as a whole, not divided up so that portions can be chosen. And in his prayer that encompasses verse 15 through 23, he intends for them to enjoy everything he mentions for their spiritual growth. Persistently pray powerfully. Ephesians 1, 15 through 16. Therefore, I also... After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Paul knew how to pray. He mentions in most of his letters that he prayed for those he had led to the Lord or had influence upon. Whereas most of us often pray only when something bad might happen or has already happened. Paul remembers the faith and love of the Ephesian believers and gives thanks for them, along with praying for them. Prayer is simply talking to God. It's a conversation with the Almighty God of the universe, believing that He hears, that He wants to speak to you and me. It's easy to talk to Him, but harder to hear. Yet He tells us, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Wow, that is Gospel truth right there. God has showed me so many things that I did not know since I became a Christian. Opened my eyes up to a whole new plane of living in Christ Jesus' Son. 
It has been a fantastic journey. I, like you, am still on that journey, praying, singing, worshiping, studying, growing. I wouldn't change it for all the money in the world. Mm -mm. Nothing, nothing compares to it. Pray for ah experiences. That's one of my best. Ah, oh, ooh. Ephesians 117. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Isn't that wonderful? What a wonderful thing for Paul to say. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and reverence and the knowledge of him. Paul prays that each believer will have a spirit of wisdom and revelation of who God is. Although this does not refer specifically to the personal spirit of God, we cannot receive sp true spiritual wisdom without the Holy Spirit being involved. Paul had just written to these believers about all the benefits and joys they have as Christians. But would they understand its significance? Only the Spirit would make it important to real I'm sorry. Only the Spirit could make its importance real to them. When they understood that, then they would really get to know God. Paul's desire was ultimately that every believer would know God better. Without the spirit of wisdom and revelation that Paul mentions, a Christian could read their Bible and not receive anything from it. I read it. I don't understand it. I put it aside. Oh, because you didn't have faith to believe that the word was from God. You didn't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You weren't baptized. How are you going to understand? Because if you read it and you understood it, you've been blessed by God and you will follow all those things. You have to put effort into it. When I started to knit, crochet, do macrame, pretty punch, my knitting machine, any craft, anything I started out to do, I had I had to learn and I had to teach myself. But one nice thing, the scriptures teach you. Oh, and that's so refreshing. But with the Holy Spirit's input, a verse or passage can suddenly become alive and very meaningful. Even though he or she has read those verses many times before, Paul wants Ephesian believers to have such ah experiences. My husband mentioned the other day as he was reading his scripture, reading readings for the day, he went, oh, honey, come here. And I go see what the hubbub was about. Listen to this. And he, I've read this a hundred times. And I didn't know this. It was such a delight seeing the sparkle in his eye in that ah moment. James 3.17 identifies God's wisdom as pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. J. Parker or Packer said, For some unfathomable reason, he wants me as his friend and desires to be my friend. And he has given his son to die for me in order to realize this purpose. We cannot work these thoughts out here, but merely mentioning them is enough to show how much it means to know, not merely that we know God, but God knows us. Paul wrote out his prayer for the believers that he cared about. He could have just said, I, I, I pray for you. I pray for you and left it at that. But instead, he detailed, detailed the different things he prayed. That way, they could notice how God was doing those very things in their lives and be encouraged. We can see the same benefit in those we pray for by writing out our prayers for others. Writing out, not typing them, not sending an email. Good old-fashioned, handwritten, incursive letter, deep from the heart. 
We can see the same benefit in those we pray for by writing out our prayers for others and letting them read what we've written. If you're emailing someone to say you'll pray for them, why not quickly type up the words you're saying to God on their behalf? Or, or write a letter telling them you are being faithful to pray as you said you would. It's bound to encourage them and you, and they can report the difference your prayers have made. Now, there's nothing wrong with a hand-typed letter. Some people's hands hurt. It's hard for them to write, to hold a pencil. I understand that. But, boy, there's nothing that, nothing like receiving a handwritten letter. All right, we're going to stop there for today. I see we're at 20 minutes. Next time we come on, we will do verses 18 through 23 and do the chapter wrap-up of Ephesians chapter 1. All right, everyone. God bless you for following along in this study. I am so enjoying this. I am growing and learning every day. My heart is becoming softer and softer toward God each time I read his word. We need to look at Paul's style in writing these letters, how he opens his letter, how he addresses the people, how he brings in correction if correction is needed. It's always gentle, firm, to the point, loving, caring. And that's how we need to be. If we're going to win people, if we're going to draw people to us, we just can't keep clobbering over the head all the time. We need to be patient, kind, long-suffering, all those things. All right. Well, that's it for today. I have been busy in uh, my crocheting and on my knitting machine. I can't wait for Friday. On Friday, we do our we do a devotional, and then we also do Friday Makes. It's things that I have been working on or have finished for that week. I am so enjoying that. It is, it is being so much fun. I'm getting a lot of things done for Christmas. It's just it's fantastic. All right, you good people. I'm going to let you go for today. Um, have a blessed day in the Lord. Lord willing, I will be back on tomorrow, and we will finish up Ephesians chapter one. Thank you for being a part of my channel. I love each and every one of you. If you could press that like button, leave a comment. Let me know that you're out there and um, let me let me know maybe what, what was an ah moment for you in a Bible verse. That would be awesome. Take care, everyone. God bless.